What you looking for? I'm looking for my Bible. Oh. And we're live. Sixth. The blue one or the red one? The blue one. Lascivious. They say in Romans 6. Actually, early. Oh, we. Right at six fifty nine. Look <laughs> at God. Won't He do it? Yeah. yeah. Will He wanna? Will He wanna? <laughs> <laughs> Will He wanna? Good evening, Brother Elliot, Brother Larry Williams. Good evening. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to share, y'all. We want to reach as many people as possible. Good evening. Good evening, Sister Dupree. God bless you all this afternoon. Uh, thank God for another opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to rebuke, reprove with all long suffering. And tonight we have a provocative message tonight and uh, I want you to keep in mind the word lasciviousness and that word has to do with provoking sexual desires in another person to be lascivious and that is salacious that what you wear, what you do, excites sexual desires in another person. Now, I'm going to pray, Father, in Jesus' name, pray that you give us the unction, the ability, with ease, to bring forth your word. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Sister Sybil, Pastor Patrick Jeffries. Good evening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as you come in. Definitely share. And um, if you are catching this um, as a replay, let us know how you feel in the comments down below. Yes, yes. Let's see here. Sister Sharon, good evening. Uh-huh. All right, so. Well, we're going to uh, deal with a dancing girl dealing with... Uh, Salome, or somebody may say Salome, but I checked it out, it's Salome, Salome, all right, that is the young lady that her mother told her to dance before Herod, 
and it's sort of convoluted. It's a, you know, ancestral type relationships and it's just convoluted. So I don't want to get into all the that uh, comprise the convolution. But I want to get to the real crux of the matter is that this young lady danced before Herod and excited Herod. That is to get him to do what her mother, Heroditus, wanted Salome to do to execute John the Baptist. And Jesus said there was never a man like John, John the Baptist, one of the greatest men that have ever been born. And so we want to discuss Kiki Wyatt and her sensual, sexual, uh, and also salacious. And uh, when you talk about lasciviousness, do you know you can go to hell for lascivious dressing, lascivious dancing. And so we want to talk about the dancing girl, Salome, or Salome. But the point is, is that you must, as a child, now this woman want to be a pastor. And when you see her salacious dancing and her lascivious dancing, just like Salome or Salome, she danced to excite a sexual emotion in Herod. And so when we think about what's going on in this world and people, they don't seem to, especially in the church, they don't seem to be moved by lascivious activities. But that's one of the sins that will keep you out of heaven. Lasciviousness. And so you have to be aware of your activities in the church versus the activities that's in the world. You cannot bring the culture into the world. We are countercultured people. That is, we don't live like the culture, which means a way of living. We don't live like that. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, and all things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Now, dancing is spoken of in the Bible as a symbol of rejoicing. Dancing was a part of the religion or religious ceremonies of the Egyptians. For the most part, women did the dancing, and males and females seldom intermingled. They did not dance together. And let me read this also. In the early period of the judges, the virgins of Shiloh danced as a part of a religious festival. Hmm. So dancing was also used for festive amusement apart from any religious ceremony that's found in Jeremiah 31 and the fourth verse and, of course, uh, Mark 6, talking about uh, uh, Salome, Salome 
dancing for the head of John the Baptist. So the wrong sensual dancing will excite, will excite the wrong action like Herod. And uh, Heroditus, when her daughter said, what? I mean, Herod said, uh, whatever you desire, even half of, my, half of my kingdom, I'll give to you. And what can I do for you? I want the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And it's a shame that John had to die that way. But to be absent from the body, he's present with the Lord, but dancing without a spiritual biblical support, it is devilish, it is sensual, and you have no business as a child of God wearing tight outfits to show the anatomy or the iscus of the body. And see, the devil can use a woman to excite sexual desire in another person. And that's why in Revelation says that uh, you allow that woman, Jezebel, to teach and Jezebel caused the servants of the Lord to commit adultery or sexual sins. When you see somebody in the pulpit, and you know, even the angels, <laughs> they were seduced by the daughters of men. See, a woman is powerful. Sex is powerful. And the human element, when you have human that is caught up into the sensuality, the, uh, let's say, the pleonexia in the Greek, pleonexia, unbridled passion for more, and to excite that kind of response is a sin. And that's why we dress in modest apparel. You know, it used to be when you see a woman dressed like Kiki, you say, oh my goodness, that means she is, let's say, sexual and she wants to stir up sexuality in somebody else. And they call them uh, women of the night. I'm being euphemistic. They call them uh, loose women. Call them women who are available. Like I said in, in Corinth, when a woman would wear her shoulders out and maybe showing up some other things, that means she's available. The prostitutes in Corinth that's how they signal whether they are available. And so it is prostitutes always dress in a provocative way and to advertise that I am available for a price. And so it is in the church. We find, we find people in the church now you can't tell the church from the church people from the people in the streets. And it ought to be a difference. Now, this young lady, Kiki, she says she's going to start a church. She don't care what nobody say. I'm going to start a church. And see, when you're talking to entertainers, they think they are above everybody. And they can just do what they want to do. And they come to church with that attitude. I am Kiki. I am a star. 
and I can just do what I want to do. I have enough money, and that's dangerous is when you have enough money to express yourself. You can afford to express yourself without any restraint. The question is, can you afford yourself? I mean, really, can you afford to be you? As <laughs> loony as you can be, you cannot afford to be the extent of your personality. It's got to be some restraint. And so we're going to play uh, her video, how she was uh, gyrating and yeah, I'm not really finding that video that you're speaking on, but I think um, it's right in there. The other one, pull it up. This one right here. That's the one. You, that's our video. Yeah, I know, but you cut it off. Uh, that's yeah. our video. I'm talking about the video about or showing Kiki dancing. Yeah, dancing. I don't know. I can't find it. So that's what I was trying to tell you. Um. But, I mean, I guess you can speak on her outfits. Uh, and you Yeah, know, yeah. The uh, erotic, uh, erotic emotions usually arise in one person's or one person or another temptation to touch and feel. And that is go, go beyond decent moral convictions. See, emotions get confused as the music swells and slow down. And, you know, we used to do the slow drag in the world. Yes. And what that did was excite, uh, let's say, sexual desires. And that's why lasciviousness is so dangerous. All right, and uh, uh, touching another person's body turns into lustful desires. Dancing can also bring out jealousy that that might even, all right, that might never have the occasion to surface if it wasn't for dancing. I remember when I was in Charleston, South Carolina, and I was precociously wicked, older in action than I was in in age. And I remember we were, if anybody know about Charleston, they have what's called Riverside Beach. And my brother and I and some other friends, we would go there to party, oh, to drink. I found it. You found it? All right, thank God. You almost got fired again. Anyway, how many times uh, I fired you today? You can't fire somebody who already quit. All right. <laughs> anyway. It's impossible. All right. So, so uh, let me get back to my yeah. story. We had a friend... I don't think he's still alive because some of my friends, they died early in life. Teenagers shot to death. Uh, many of them died early, but here I am. I'm still here. But we was at this uh, Riverside Beach and they had a, a space for you to dance I guess you would call it a outdoor uh, dancing uh, club, for lack of a better word. And my friend, the young man dancing with his young lady, and my friend, uh, well, Charlie, there were a lot of people named Charlie, but this was our friend, Charlie. Charlie was out of control. So he goes to the, the couple and he 
he wants to dance with this man's girlfriend. And when the man showed that he didn't want him to dance with his girlfriend, Charlie pulls out a buckle belt. Back in those days, it was a weapon. And he swings at the man, hits the man, and the girlfriend, she just frightened by this action. Charlie going to try to dance with this man's girlfriend. So what happened? Did the guy beat him up or kill him? No, or let me, let me, let me, this is a story and a half. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> Charlie was dancing with the girlfriend. Yeah, Charlie was dancing with the girlfriend and the boy, the man rather, didn't like it. But Charlie runs the man away with his weapon, the buckle belt. He hit the man upside the head a few times. Charlie needed to be at the mental institution, really. I said to Charlie, I know you didn't hit that man. Oh, yeah. I wanted to dance with his girlfriend. He got all upset. I said, man, you don't just snatch nobody's girlfriend. Do you know you can get in trouble? That man, you know, he don't want you dancing with his girlfriend. So the man left. And when he came back, he came back with a pickup truck full of his friends and they all had guns. <laughs> Ready. They all had guns. I'm talking about I don't know how many but every one of them had uh, a gun. And so I said to my brother bless his heart him and I said, man, we got to get out of here. You see all these fellas with guns. And Charlie, he tried to get away. But they had too many guns and they were shooting at him. So my brother and I, we, we ducked between some cars. And God bless us when we asked the man to take us to the bridge. And the man took us to the bridge. But we could hear the, the guns uh, going off or uh, being shot at Charlie. Pow! Pow! <laughs> Charlie ended up in the swamp. And the next time we saw him was the next morning. And uh, he looked like he had walked <laughs> the water like Jesus, all right? But anyway, anyway he... He didn't walk on the water. He was walking in mud. He had mud from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. So the point I'm trying to make, dancing provoked Charlie to want to dance with that man's girlfriend. Dancing can get you shot. So dancing can <laughs> get you shot and dancing can get you killed. All right? Not just shot. You can be killed dancing. Now, uh, let me read a, read something else about dancing. Uh, um, there's a super chat from Jess. All right. It says, yeah. I'm, okay. It says, my old boss who laid me off in January notified the team there will be another massive layoff. He's prohibited from telling this information. I submitted an anonymous complaint to the ethics team to get him investigated. I now feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel guilty? Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, well, do they know you told? It was anonymous. Um, yeah. And he wasn't supposed to tell you guys this information, but you were already... Okay, notified the team to do. I don't know. Um... 
Jess, I'm telling you, your old boss who had you laid off. In laid June. you off in January, just notified the team that there will be another massive layoff. He's prohibited from telling this information. I submitted an anonymous complaint to the ethics team to get him investigated. Well, we're not going to tell. <laughs> if you... <laughs> We're not going to tell, uh, Jess. Yeah, I We're mean, not going to do it. We're not going to do you like that. All right? You know. Mm, 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 mm. Well, now, what was I did saying? Did I put his job in? I don't know, Miss Jess. Um, it seems like he might lose his job anyway because there's going to be a, a massive layoff. So just, you know, you, you're well, you no know. longer with that company anymore. And, and these companies don't really care for you. Um, or for anyone, for that matter, you're just a, a number. So is that supervisor or your boss. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. Well, the whole thing is that anything you can't do nothing about. Yeah. And it's already been done. All right. You warning the people, just like you warning somebody that something dangerous is going to happen. You warn them. So yeah. don't feel guilty about warning them about a reality. And you did not start the reality. You didn't have anything to do with the reality. You're a victim also of being laid off. Yeah. All right? All so right. So just let, let that be. It's, yeah. it's in the past, and you'll, yeah. you'll be all right. Yeah. So and they'll, he'll be okay. Yeah, they all will find another job, you know. All right. I'm, all I'm, right. I want to get back to this uh, dancing thing. And uh, Kiki, I like to show what I'm talking about. And she's supposed to be a pastor. Yeah. And let's see here. Let's see here. All right. All right, you get ready to see this. Okay, then. I'm almost there. There we go. All right. Yeah, she did a little twerk. She's shaking her and it's gonna be a pastor. Yeah, well I mean there's worse examples. I know that um we're harping on you know women in the church and being seductive, um, but there's other forms of seduction too. Like like you were speaking on um the church looking more so like the culture yeah. and subscribing to the culture as opposed to, you know, creating its having the church has its own culture. It has its own. Well, let's way see. Of, yeah. But see, we're talking about what is ideal, not right. as what is real. We got to deal with the idealism of the church. We right. are countercultured people. Right. And there, that's why we're saying the. The culture should not come into the church like she was uh, salaciously dressed. Mm -hmm. and but now, this, now you have churches that do stuff like this, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It should <laughs> not be. All right. I, I'm sort of rebuking this woman vicariously because it should not be. Yeah. We're supposed to be sanctified. We're supposed to be dedicated to God and separated. Not not uh, backing it up and, and walking, walking it, out. it out. He needs look, to walk out look. the door. Look at that. That's the that was the club right there. That's a club. This man is off. But look at his church, and this is why Kiki think that she can have her own church, and she can do whatever. 
Like well, you have seasoned ministers and people like this that. Well, he's not seasoned. He is an is apostate. He, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he has denied the the sanctification uh, culture. He have now mixed the church with the world, and that is adulterated. Mm-hmm. And see, God wants exclusivity. He don't, I mean, the world hates God. The world is anti-God. Mm-hmm. The world is a culture that is against the principles of God. And if you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. You are an enemy of God. This man, uh, William Murphy the Third. You talking about cuckoo? Yeah. I mean, he's a he's a he's an apostate. He mm-hmm. don't believe what we used to. Well, I still believe, but he don't believe what he used to believe. Right. That's what I was. You know, the church is in an apostate condition. That is, they have fallen away mm-hmm. from what we've been taught. And the Bible said, "Hold fast." to the tradition that you've been taught by letter or even by example. Mm -hmm. So this is a a reflection of the last days. And Jesus said there's going to be many false teachers and false prophets. And this man is a false teacher equivalent to a false prophet. This woman how in the world is she going to be a pastor? And guys from the street, when they come into the church, they don't want to see that. Yeah. Because they see that in, out in the world. You don't want to be on the Titanic and the ocean, too much ocean is in the, the ship. You don't want the ocean in the, in the ship because the ship is going down. Too much ocean. Too much of the world in the church. When I was out in the street, when I came to the church, those young people looked so different than I was. They had a different culture. I could feel the difference. And then when they danced before the Lord, it was beautiful. The music was different. I mean, the activity of the church was so different. And difference will draw. Like a magnet. The magnet draws the object. All right? Mm -hmm. And the object don't draw the magnet. The magnet draws the the object. (laughs) Sister Dolores said uh, they should have never started the line dancing in church. No, that's right. You're right. They shouldn't have never started that foolishness. (laughs) And they called now. The electric slide? Wait, what? Uh, Listen. (laughs) The line dancing is like, uh, let me see, they get together and they they be stepping to the left, stepping to the right. I took a picture of the people, I did a video rather, and I was on the carnival, uh, the carnival uh, cruise ship. And I told my my son and his mother-in-law, when I saw all of us getting on that ship, I said, there's going to be some fights on this ship. And sure enough, (laughs) three fights broke out. And they were doing the line dance. And they were shaking it to the left and shaking it to the right. The cha-cha slide. And they, I don't know, (laughs) they was shaking their booty and everything. And I did a video to show everybody that there's no difference now from the worldly dancing because they have brought it into the church. Mm -hmm. And I want to say to all pastors, you as a priest, you are tied to the altar. And if the altar, listen, if the priest is weak, then the congregation will be weak. It's just like a man. If he's a weak man 
makes a sick wife, a sick woman. And so the pastor got to be strong and he represents the altar. And if he is defected, then the altar is defected and then the church is defected. Mm -hmm. And like people, like priests. So you got to be an example, not like this crazy uh, uh, William Murphy III. See, he's a church boy, never been out in the yeah. world. So he wants to experience the world. Since That's he why made, I can't see. Since he's making money from the church, he can't give up the money, all right? <laughs> he ain't going to give up the money. He'd rather bring the, the street in the church. Mm -hmm. And sinners don't want to see that. Even sinners know better than that. Yeah. They would complain, say, what that man, what that woman doing up there with them tights on? And I'm like... Uh, uh, uncle of yours, grand uncle. He, I'm not gonna call Ooh. his name because he he listened to me all the time. <laughs> but he know who I'm talking about. He said, eh, you know, he's a very handsome guy, so he he uh, he always had trouble with women. So he called himself. Well, I'm going to church, praise the Lord, and I'm gonna get over this. And I'm going to get some Jesus here. And he said, he gets to church and this big uh, bottom woman right in front of him, gyrating, just boom, did a boom, did a boom. And he said, yeah. he said, what in the mm -hmm. world is going on? I'm trying to get it's myself together with the Lord. And here I'm sitting behind this woman with her sensual, uh, lascivious uh, <laughs> behind. Yeah, it's a lot of... See, that, that ain't nothing people. but the devil. See, that's a tear that has been planted by the devil. Mm -hmm. And it takes away from the essence of the word of God. It takes away from the, the culture of the church by adulterating the culture, by bringing the world into the church. I want to know, what is the definition of the world? What is the definition? I keep saying it religiously. The culture. How they live. What they do. How they live as far as recreation. What do they do for recreation? What do they do as recreation at partying and, and drinking and carrying on? We don't do that. The things I used to do, I don't do them no more. That used to be the <laughs> testimony of everybody. Brother Dion said, I remember we had girls twerking in church. What? <laughs> what church was that? What? That must have been. Was that Baptist? No, that no, that must be one of the new new breed churches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But see. I mean, but there's a lot of people that will. Um, I guess the line that you have as far as um, what determines inappropriate and appropriate for church, it varies. So as far as the biblical sense, even me, like growing up in church, when I would see, you know, people shouting, um, I always thought that it was rehearsed, like it wasn't you know, anything really spiritual. It's just them getting some cardio or them just, you know, feeling the music or just trying to show off their shouting skills. Because I've always, I don't know. Well, I, when I was shout, I've only shouted like maybe three times in my whole life. And it was because I couldn't control myself. I had to shout like... Well, I didn't even know Lord, I was. I didn't even know I was shouting, yeah, well, or Lord. how I was shouting. And I feel like the way the shouting in the church, since we're talking about dancing, is it? To me, I feel like a lot of it is performative. No, no. There's David danced before the Lord, and here's another thing. But did thing. he practice dancing, or no, he just he, allowed he, he it was, to happen? Yeah, he moved it, uh, by the Spirit. Uh, and he, you know, when you walk in this, like the first time I danced in the spirit, it was so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I was looking forward to the next time. 
because I know it wasn't just me. I was motivated by my relationship with Jesus. Right. And, uh, you know, when you have a relationship with Jesus, you don't need to be dancing with a partner. That's what I was going to get into as well. Like in church nowadays, the thing is to, when you're shouting, you link up with somebody and y'all try to shout with the same steps. I don't know. Like people that. practice shouting in yeah. church. Like church. Well, shouting. just like this lady and like, uh, 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 what's his name? The third, William Murphy, yeah. the third. He's teaching people how to walk it out. Yeah. And he need to walk out to church. Because that's not what God is pleased with. You don't substitute sensuality for spirituality. Exactly. And see, God wants exclusivity. He don't want to share you with the devil. All right? And the devil's job is to oppose God. So when you dance in a sensual, worldly dance, it opposes God. So, so let, let me talk to the erotic emotions usually arise in one person or the other and uh, beyond decent moral convictions. Emotions get confused as the music swells and slow down, music stirs the soul, so say the poets. Touching another person's body turns into lustful desires. Dancing can also bring out jealousy. That's where I stop. <laughs> that might never have occurred on the occasion for disservice. If a person uh, were sitting in the church, dancing, sitting in the church, dancing in clubs and bars, <laughs> is usually uh, done when the lights are low See, the church got the low lights the low now. lights and all the flashing lights. All the flashing lights. It, it is very theatrical and nowadays. It's, it is the devil. All right? Yeah. The devil loved darkness instead of light because the deeds are evil. You see? And watch this now. Mm. Uh, if the people were sitting in church Dancing in clubs and bars is usually done when the lights are low and turned out. When people are dancing, the darkness covers a multitude of sins that are taking place in the dark. Where there is rock and roll or rock music, there is smoking, perhaps drugs and almost always liquor. We didn't have no party unless we had some liquor or smoked some marijuana. Now, I remember I smoked some marijuana and it changed my whole personality. I wanted, listen, the man, uh, I had a, a nice jacket on and I was smoking marijuana and some of the ashes got on my jacket. And so the man said, hey, man, I'm going to brush this off. I said to him, listen, why you touch my jacket? He said, I didn't mean that. I don't mean that. Yes, but why did you touch my jacket? <laughs> Well, you're the, I you're the I last know. person that needs to be smoking so weed. That's why I don't do it, because <laughs> my personality changed. And the man said, I didn't mean to do it. I said, but you, who told you to touch my jacket? <laughs> the man said, I'm sorry. I said, yeah, but who told you? I, I was high as I could be, because I smoked this marijuana. I know 
people can talk about it. it ain't you know it's not bad it's, <laughs> you know it's all right we all doing it we're man. all t- you know it's just oh man <laughs> one. oh it calms your nerves it made me feel like fighting I don't need that. <laughs> that you, yeah, you don't need anything. Nobody needs it. <laughs> it's a great, it's a gateway drug. And see, the devil tell you try this. That's how the devil got Eve. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, don't it look good? Oh yeah, yeah. Well. God said, if I eat of this fruit, uh, uh, we're going to die. God, listen, did he really say that? And that's the trick of the devils, always get you to question whether God said it. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with drugs. All you need is one is one time. How many, uh, I think Richard Price said he tried it one time, and that was it. Mm. And uh, some of the temptations, uh, like, uh, I can't even think of his name. He's a great singer, but he, uh, he tried it one time. Um, Ruffin? Yeah, David Ruffin. Yeah. And look how he died. Died from an mm-hmm. overdose. Just one time. And so these young people, they didn't mean to get on it, or anybody, but they tried it one time. And then you get that high. What's that? The dopamine. You know, yeah. you, you've got to try to uh, match that high. You want to get higher and what have you. So the Bible says, be not drunk with wine. I might even add, do not be high on marijuana, any kind of drugs, because you're going to find yourself being addicted. So the Bible said, let us not be drunk with wine, but be drunk in the spirit. On the time of uh, Pentecost, the people thought that the saints were drunk. They said, no, we are not drunk, as ye suppose. <laughs> but this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. That Those people were caught up into the ecstasy of the Spirit. And the Bible said, delight yourself in the Lord. That is, find pleasure. When I got saved, all that drinking, all that, you know, partying, that stuff, that stuff left me. So I can find my delight in the Lord and in the power of his might. So now let me finish this here about the, all right. Yeah, they want the lights down low. They want the sanctuary dark. And then they have this false smoke coming out of the floor like they do in the club. You look for that in the club, not in the church. Yeah, I never crazy. understood the fog machines in the church. Yeah. That didn't make any sense. But They're trying to say it was this, the presence of the Lord. The Lord's not The presence in that. of the Lord? Yeah, they're saying that's the spirit, the spirit of the Lord coming up. The glory of God coming out, you know, f- from the floor. Trying to say the temple was, was filled with his glory, you know. Physical manifestation of his glory mm-hmm. but uh, that's not the way of God all right that's not the way of God now here with David the scripture says there are many scriptures in the Bible describing praise dancing but these folk have now they have uh, let's say they have desecrated the praise dancing. Because they're up there gyrating, throwing their legs up. So an old preacher said, I can't be going nowhere where they're throwing their legs up and stuff. What's going on with that? But here, what he said, let them 
praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a, uh, a, a timbrel. And that is a tambourine. Timbrel means tambourine. What happened to the tambourines? And heart. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. You know, I said the other week, the word appropriate means beautiful. Amen. See, when you are appropriate, you are beautiful. When you're not appropriate, you're ugly. This woman wearing that kind of clothes, you don't bring that into the church and you're supposed to be a pastor. That's not appropriate. Somebody say, well, it's not what you wear. I tell you what. When you go to Buckingham Palace, when they had the wedding for uh, the prince, what's his name? Uh, I don't pay attention to those people. Well, I'm just making an example. Charles. No, I think. no, the young man that married, uh, what's his name? Anyway, it, it, the young prince. Harry. Harry, right. When they got married... <laughs> Nobody, Oprah Winfrey, all the big shots, they had to have a hat on. And they had to dress appropriately. So when you're wearing tights in the pulpit, it's like that, uh, you know, what's the name? Uh, white. Uh huh. Uh, the woman pastor. Kiki White? No, no. I'm talking about. Uh, Paula White? Paula White. She's in oh. the pulpit with her tights on and She's talking about she, she learned how to use her lips and and shake her hips. That's the kind of stuff going on. You see, that's why you have clothes to cover up yourself. Mm -hmm. I preached a message one time, fig leaves are withering. And that is that the covering is being taken away. Yeah. You know, tight pants and legs out, short dresses and all. That's not appropriate. I tell you what, even I read about the, uh, the schools that they have a dress code. And I read it and say no holsters, no mini skirts. You can't come to the class that that way. Right. But they want to go to church any kind of way. And there's some exclusive restaurants. They won't let you in. That you looking like sin dipped in confusion. They won't let you in there because they want class. They want you to be appropriate. So when you wear tights to church, short dresses, and your cleavage are out, mm -hmm. that is not appropriate. And the Bible said, I hate your garment. Jude, Jude said that. I hate your garment that have been spotted by the flesh. When you're talking about flesh, you're talking about sensuality. You're talking about sexuality when you talk about the flesh. Mm -hmm. When you know who you are, a young man don't want to see everything. He wants some things to be a surprise. Women who are classy, they don't have their, uh, let's say, cleavage showing. They don't wear tight outfits like your mother. She was so classy. I mean, her, her, her dress mostly St. John, just fit her just right. She was a classy young lady. All right? Never had to tell her that her chest, her cleavage is out. Well, on the topic of Kiki, I think that, I mean, obviously she's mentally ill. Okay? <laughs> she's mentally I ill. I agree. And um, the last video 
that we you spoke on her and we talked about you know her declaring that she's opening a church and becoming a pastor um in the chat i i saw a few people say you know who hurt her or she she sounds real hurt like she yeah. You know, because yeah, she, she's that able. Anger came out. She, yeah, yeah, she's very angry with the church, and um, she's able to. You know, she's a world-renowned singer. She's successful in that area in her own right. Why not just live in that? Why does she have to go back to wanting to be a pastor of a church, and then having so much hostility towards, you know, church in general? Um, something must have happened. And so to correct this, we can, you know, yes, she's lascivious. She's a dancing girl. She's all of these things. She's Jezebel. You know, she's all of that. But clearly, and she's a, a preacher's kid too, right? Right. Clearly, she something happened in the church to where she has all of this hostility towards the church to the point where she wants to start her own. That it, that's the mentally ill part of her, for sure. But what is, you know, how do you overcome church hurt? And how do you overcome being, you know, you know, when, in that uh, in that feeling of oh well, I was hurt so bad that I want to create an environment for other people to just, you know, you just completely go to the other end of the spectrum. Because of whatever happened to you. How do you overcome Well, that? her church, people are going to get hurt there too. Yeah. So the whole thing is that the reality is this. Is that most people have been hurt. Jesus hurt until he died. So you cannot avoid being hurt. All right? So the whole thing is that a man that is born of a woman, let's transpose this word that full of trouble, let's say full of hurt. Full of hurt. Whether you're in the church or not, yeah. you're going to be hurt. See? So you can't use that to exempt you from the reality that you have to learn how to get over stuff. You know, I was hurt. In the church, <laughs> it took me, it took me a while, but I, but I got over it. Yeah, you, know you got over it because of other churches that weren't hurting you but helping you and and showing what church is really supposed to be like. It was it was so. uh, it was not plenteous. It was maybe every now and then. You might run into like my my son, spiritual son, yeah. Craig Lewis. Mm -hmm. Now I love that church because that I church, love that, church too. that church is spiritual. They love the Lord because they're being taught. I love that church. Yes, very well, much. Well, you can make him your pastor. Long distance. <laughs> I, what I'm saying is, I love his church is the representation of how a church is supposed yes, to be. I I'm not saying that everyone in his church is perfect. No. And I'm sure somebody... But perfectly willing. Yeah, exactly. But I can, you can just tell the difference in his church compared to other churches that I've been to. Well, That you know, I've experienced myself. You know, his church, first of all, he has his family under control. Right. His wife is not trying to be a co-pastor. Only thing she does is direct the choir. She don't get in the pulpit hollering and caring. No, she's a nice young lady that loves the mm -hmm. Lord. She compliments his life. His boys are saved. All right? They, he has a home that is uh, representative of a Christian home. And you pastor from your home. Mm -hmm. Because how can you pass to other people when your home is out of whack? Right. See, so that's why he's such an, a two pause. He's a model and example. When all these old crazy preachers, they're making their wives. Let me tell you something. 
when you put your wife in a masculine position, and I'm going to do a message uh, teaching men only, then I'm going to do one another one, women only. Somebody going to have to redefine what it means for men to be in leadership. And I found out from my spiritual son, Craig, he is a smart young man. He says that uh, women, they are not departmentalized to deal with making decisions. Like playing chess, say most women cannot be cannot be the man in chess. Now, if you may find one, but you won't find the norm mm -hmm. that women it's not putting women down. It yeah. says you not you're not a man. Yeah, women typically think differently. Right. And so, are more emotional when yeah, making decisions. Yeah, they they emotional, but a real man, not unless he's a little, little um, sassy. sassy. <laughs> yeah, but if he's a real holistic man, he's built for leadership. He reflects God, and uh, God created the man to be the head. And when you don't support or um, celebrate your subordinate position, you acting like the devil who did not celebrate his subordinate position. You know, mm -hmm. when you want to be above the stars of God and want to be like the most high, you want you want to be your own God. You don't want to be subject to nobody. That's the motivation behind the devil wanting to be like the most high that he is not subject to anybody. He's his own God. So anybody that's trying to be independent, exclusive, and independent, exclusivity, uh, existential, and you are your own boss, you're acting just like the devil. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to come on tonight just to identify this young lady that she is off. She is not a Christian. She's not, a, well, the devil believe and tremble, but the devil is not saved. When somebody tell me, oh, I believe, I, hey, the devil believe, and he trembles. So that's not no big deal because you believe, but do you believe enough to let God work in you the willing to do and be subject to him and live for him, and he's already giving you a way to live. You don't have to try to find a way. It's in the word of God. You see? And if this word be in you, and if you live the word out that's in you, then you're a witness. You're telling somebody, this is wonderful. This is the will of God. And you celebrate that. You don't go around looking like you're ready to take God to court for non-support, looking like you have been drugged through Georgia with a, without an umbrella and a rain, rain jacket. You, even when you're fasting, the Bible don't want you going out there, oh, I'm starving for Jesus. Please pray that I'll make it through the day. No, he wants you to wash your face, all right, and fast without being a Pharisee telling everybody that you fast and they used to look so sad when they fasted. And that's that's not the way the Lord wants. So did I say anything about, oh, where there's rock music, there's smoking, perhaps drugs, and almost always liquor. Mixed together suggestive language and some touching, kissing, necking, foreplay, dirty jokes, sexual advances, and you can see how far removed dancing is from praising God. And here's another point. People 
used to dance in spite of persecution as an act of their faith that God was with them. Jesus said, and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed, which means happy are ye that uh, hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. See, you can be hurt in the church or even in the world. And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you, talk bad about you, and put you down, and cast out your name as evil. Wow. For the Son of Man's, that is Christ's sake, when you go through this for Christ's sake, rejoice in that day and leap, that is dance, and, it says, and leap, that is dance for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers also, well, fathers unto the prophets. That's Luke 6, 20 uh, through the 23rd. And so if you feel like dancing in the Lord, that's good. But God don't want you dancing for sensuality and lascivious uh, desire. All right? All right. I don't know if I said all I need to say, but this dancing stuff uh, connected to this woman, she's out of order. Did we show where she was gyrating and acting like I, she's in the bed? I was able to find that clip. I don't. I I couldn't find what you were talking about with her. With that, I didn't see it. I well, couldn't find it. Well, I saw it the last time. She was just. Oh my goodness, she was just going at it, and it's not appropriate. That's the word. When you are appropriate, it means you're beautiful. Anything else, you're ugly. That's right. And so, praise God. I hope uh, the, the dancing of this day is not pleasing in the sight of God. Going back to this man, William Murphy, talking about what did he say? He uh, was walking it out and walking um, it out. Uh, swag surfing and and then there's another like, thing talking about back it up, back yeah. it up. They was doing that on the ship, mm -hmm. and three fights broke out. <laughs> they had to send for helicopters to come get uh, some of the uh, Nicolaitans. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, see that liquor. Dancing, you're going to have some issues. Your inhibitions is gone, and you do just what you want to do. Yeah, how I many? One one guy, they, he jumped off the ship, not one I was on, but they had to <laughs> go back and get him. <laughs> that liquor tell you, and drugs would tell you, you know, Richard Pryor, he was looking at uh, television and he saw this man set himself on fire. It was a circus thing. But he sets himself on fire. And Dion want to know if you know how to uh, dance like Kirk Franklin or Rance Allen. No, I'm, I'm not doing that. See, that's another fella. Kirk Franklin <laughs> is gone. He's ignorant of the truth because of the in, uh, innocuous t 
teaching of his pastor, they don't, you know, they don't preach about stuff like this. They're so glad to have a Kirk Franklin, you know. Oh, my goodness, he's a star. But he's just as wrong as he is short, and he's not tall at all, all right? I mean, he's on the... He's on the stage dancing and gyrating and doing the James Brown and Michael Jackson. And I don't, I really don't encourage anybody to listen. I don't listen to Kurt Franklin. Right. No, his music is too adulterated. I don't listen to Kurt Franklin. No. Um, just reading from the chat, Sister Deloise, I like I like what she said here. I overcome church hurt by keeping my gla my gaze on Jesus. That's right. I was hurt really, really bad. I had to leave and forgive. I I agree with that. Yeah. That's the way you get over it. You leave and, you, and forgive. No, well you forgive, but you don't necessarily have to leave. Because wherever you go, you're going to find some of the same people, kinds of people in whatever church. I think birds of a feather flock together, and you can kind of decipher mm. on what type of bird you want to deal with. Well, <laughs> some of these churches... By leaving and going to another uh, if, if the uh, church. I would say this. I preach about when the don't let the dove fly away. Right. But if you let the dove fly away, then the buzz is coming. Exactly. So some of these churches, they have, instead of a dove, they have a buzzard, which represents death. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Exactly. Anybody else got something to say? God bless you, Dolores. Bless you. All right. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Uh, Shout out to Sister Dupree, Sister Dolores, all of our moderators, Brother Elliot. Um, oh, you got to add some more and, moderators. Okay. I got to, um, I'll figure out how to do that. So Sister Dolores can tell me how to do it. Um, Sister Amelia, Coco Yummy, shout out to you. Uh, did I say Derek Sutton? Charnell Clark, shout out. Shout out to everyone. Um, and of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we still have a few more hoodies hey, left. Um, when I say a few, I mean a, a few. But uh, they're, they're there, and we are preparing to... Um, have the t-shirts available as well mm -hmm. uh, so that will be ready for the summertime um, but don't forget to you know check out the online shop at shop7000club.com you can purchase the books there as well um, the checkout system is corrected so now you're able to uh, purchase various items at once and so um just go to the website shop 7000 club.com and um you can either shop around if you want to buy multiple items or you can um just buy the item that you see on the website um so you do have that option now thank god um, and then we also have Trouble in the Barnyard, A Hen-Pecked Husband, and A Rooster-Pecked Wife. That's one of the classics here. Also on sale on the website. And then, of course, we have The Theology of the Limp versus The Theology of Wholeness. Okay? We're selling a lot of these. Um, this is good. This is really, really good for those who... Um, our pastoring, ministering, um, attend church, you know, whatever it is, <laughs> everything that you need to know about uh, weakness in the church, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is it. And um, 
And yes, so we do have the Sam Mackey Stupid hoodies. We also have the um, It Was Reported to Me mm. hoodie. And um, so, yeah, just check it out on the website. And also, Bishop Carver is, um, he's relevant now. He's on social media. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> he has a social media footprint now. He has... Um, Instagram. Wow. Facebook. Well, you always have Facebook, but you have a new and improved Facebook. Mm -hmm. He has even TikTok, y'all. Excuse me. TikTok? TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I can't. I can't. I cannot do. I got TikTok too, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. I know. So, Tickety Talk. He got yeah. Tickety Talk. Yeah. He got, um, and his, of course, his own website. So, definitely uh, follow him, like, and um, we're, we're trying to build up, you know, his social media and get him, get the ministry's name out there, get his name out there and reach as many people as possible um, because, you know, obviously, a lot of people need to hear what you have to say, um, because everything is just very much sugar coated, mm -hmm. and nobody's hearing this anymore in in some churches. So, yeah. Well, uh, I want everybody to uh, subscribe, yes, like and share, yes, subscribe. Like and share. Yes. And all of those links, yes. Uh, all of those links are in the description box below. He also has a link tree. That's the first link that you'll see in the uh, description box. You can click on that and that will give you access to all of his social media accounts as well as the website, uh, shop7000club.com and um, the YouTube channel as well. So. And uh, he has a birthday coming up. He wanted everybody to know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget his birthday. Yeah, it's on on March 30th. Right. Okay? Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got a birthday we'll coming have, up. We'll have a little uh, something for you. All right. All mm -hmm. right. Well, I appreciate it. After mm -hmm. being in this world this long. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll have a little song for you. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you going to be now? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Say it. <laughs> I'll be 74. Oh, you still young. Oh, all right. You I'll, got this. I'll take that. <laughs> Yeah. You gotta you gotta say it like seventy four years young. Oh yeah, seventy four years. Young. You don't look seventy four. That's right. And you don't. Well, sometimes you try to act like you seventy four. Well, but. when it helps me. You know? <laughs> That's when you want to just get whatever you want. <laughs> but yes. All right. Well, we thank <laughs> God for all of you and. Don't forget, uh, subscribe, like, and share. Yes, definitely. We want to subscribe. get the numbers up. Subscribe, like, and share. And comment down below. Yes. <laughs> I think what we discussed tonight was is it was very needed mm -hmm. because of these people like uh, Kirk Franklin and and. Uh, Oh my goodness! Oh, wait, hold on, Sister Sharon. Sister Sharon, her birthday is on the thirtieth too. Y'all are birthday twins. Wow! Wow! And she'll be turning sixty-six years young. I know All that's right. right. All right. Okay, happy birthday! We're gonna celebrate your birthday as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Happy birthday! Oh, yeah. <laughs> did y'all see oh. uh, uh, Jamal Bryant's? Assistant pastor. Oh, the one with the BBL? The what? The BBL. What is that? The same thing Kiki White got? Oh, yeah. She, <laughs> I, that man, uh, uh, Jamal, got to be crazy. 
I mean, to have Look, a woman in the pulpit like that. The there, it, he's still not. He's still being talked about. He's still people are still going to his church, and the more he keeps re being rewarded for you know this type of behavior, the more it's just going to continue. Well, it's what crazy. it is that is a liberal church. Yeah, it's a and liberal so he, church. So they're they're compatible. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know Eddie Long, that's the church he founded. So you know you got everything in there. And so he don't want, they don't want no holiness. Mm -hmm. They preach a, uh, a black liberation uh, theology. Right. And that sounds good and it, it pulls on black folks to make them feel that they are being cheated and that they need to get everything that they should have. And that sounds real good about justice and so you can make a lot of money keeping folk upset yeah you know what i mean the white man did this the white man did that i'm sick of that song what did you do all right so um and also real quick uh brother Derek sutton he said his birthday is coming up on the 25th so happy birthday to you as well. Amen. Yeah. All right. And then, um, are we doing Friday or we're what gonna is, be busy? Yeah, yeah, but we can do something. Yeah. When we get there. Okay. Because yeah. I, I'm always faithful to my post, but we can deal with. Uh, I'm going out of town to celebrate a uh, friend of mine's 80th birthday. Uh, yes, he is Richard White, better known as Mr. Clean, because he has a, a bald head, <laughs> and we call him Mr. Clean. So it's his 80th birthday, and he's not feeling that well. So Church of God in Christ, quite a few are going to be there. So I plan to uh, go and and be there to celebrate. Yeah. And my darling daughter, she's going to drive me at least, I think. <laughs> I am. All right. Well, <laughs> praise the Lord for that. <laughs> she don't want me on the road by myself, you know. Yeah. They don't want that insurance money right now. Oh, my gosh. They can wait a while. <laughs> Yeah, that by the time, it ain't uh, even gonna be worth nothing. Oh, it's gonna be worth it, I'm believing. Now that this inflation. Well, don't think about that. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. God bless you, saints. Anybody have a comment before we close? And I enjoyed it tonight. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, um, Let's oh, did we tell them that they, they can go to EarlCarterMinistry.com? No. What is it now? What I, is it? Say, I said everything. You almost gave them the wrong website again. <laughs> it's Shop7000Club.com. Where they can they, give an offering? Oh, oh, there you go. Um, no, so the PayPal, if you, if you, um, you know, donate... Through PayPal, there's a separate link. There's a, a link right there under the in the description box below. And then also, if you click on the first link, the link tree, you'll see where it says um, to give an offering or for donation. You just click on that that box as well. But the PayPal link is down in the description box below. Um, all of the instructions are down in the in description what about box cash below. Out? We've been they they cash out right there, right in they see your cash out right under your face. All right, let me make sure. <laughs> <laughs> and Zell, you got Zell. The Zell, the Zell is there too, yeah. and brother Elliot. Been, he's been posting his Zell. All right, yeah, yeah, most of the the whole chat. You got, we got it. Any, All right, anything All right. else? Yeah, I mean that's good. I appreciate it. <laughs> I need all I can get. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your support. Um, and you want to do the prayer? You wanna yes. Pray? If you're not saved and if you are in a uh, liberal church where they let you do anything, a vongular preacher that will let you do anything without any rebuke or reprove, you need to leave that church and find yourself a real full gospel church, all right, where the preacher got a good family and he teaches the truth. So you need to get out of there, run, as long as thy feet shall take thee. Again, I say run, get out of there. And you that's not saved, I want you to know, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the mouth, confession is made, and with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Now, so bow your heads and say, Lord Jesus, I come this night a sinner, and I want to be saved. Forgive me for my many sins. Wash me in your precious blood. Save me from me because I'm a mess and I need to be saved. And I live for you the balance of my days. So help me God. Amen, amen and amen. If you believe that, you prayed it in earnestness, you have been forgiven and let God work on you that anachronosis, regeneration, and restoration, and of course, renovation, then restoration. Mm-hmm. All right? God yeah. bless you. And, and shout we- out to um, Minister Jack. Oh, yeah. uh, shout I'm out to Sister Shayla Sneed. Um, yes, Minister Jack out in California. Shout out to Bishop uh, Flowers. Oh, yes. We Thank want to make you. him a moderator. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. Sister, I need to know Sister how to do Dolores, it. Sister uh, Dolores sent me a list okay. of names. So I'm going to find out how to just um, add, add yeah. them and then just do it. I can do that tonight. You can add them when you're not on live, right? Like right. you could just add them. Child, don't I don't ask, know why I'm asking. Don't ask me. <laughs> I'm asking the people in the chat. Yeah, ask them. Yeah. I'll figure it out. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> and Sister Nashayla Hargrove, thank you so much for your support. And you all have a good night. And be blessed. And thank uh, you. Going, you going to jail? <laughs> going to jail? <laughs> I'm not gonna play that today. Nah. <laughs> when you gonna play? You going to jail tonight? No. <laughs>